we developed a new drug which we called NACE2I. It's a preventative for preventing subsequent infection, but it's a treatment because it's treating that inflammation, it's abolishing that inflammation. We have every bit of confidence that we believe that we will relieve those symptoms of long COVID and it will be a potential treatment for long COVID. We've known that the key receptor that the SARS-CoV-2 virus uses is the AC2, and that exists normally on the cell surface. And what we showed for the first time in the first study was that the virus was able to hijack this AC2 and use it in a novel way in the nucleus, where it hijacks the, the host apparatus, and that process is essential for viral replication. At the time when the pandemic started, when we discovered this nuclear AC2 pathway, when we discovered that it was essential for virus replication, we didn't realize that there was long COVID. We didn't realize that a key aspect of uh, COVID is this persistent inflammation which causes massive organ damage, both in the lungs and in the kidneys and so forth. And what we've uncovered with preclinical COVID models now for the first time is that this AC2, nuclear AC2 pathway is actually a critical pathway of this inflammation. What we've been able to achieve with this drug is the, the, the nuclear AC2 is shuttled back into the, the cytoplasm and cell surface. It causes an, an, an alternative form of the AC2. And in doing so, what it does is it creates a lock on the cell surface to prevent new virus from entering, but importantly, we're able to inhibit this persistent inflammation, particularly in the lungs, where we were able to restore the lungs back to their normal function. QMR actually has one of the leading cut, cutting edge imaging facilities, um, at least in Australia. So it's really coming together with the pathologists, with cutting edge te imaging technologies with, within QAMA to unbiasedly say that we can see inflammation, but also the drug can actually inhibit that inflammation and allow the lungs, for example, to recover. The damaged lung um, pathology changes here and we lose the normal surface layer of the lung bronchial area. And once after we treat with the nasi 2 i this is the restored functional lung. Why we're so excited about this study is because it was done independently in several laboratories. So this isn't work which was done in one laboratory, it's repeated multiple times in different laboratories using different preclinical settings. When we saw the results showing that the peptides, these drugs were inhibiting inflammation and this was pretty clear, I think for us it was uh, really great. Each of us brings uh, her expertise and that's how we achieve the work. And that's how we've been working for a long time. They, these are the days you, you forget about all the hours of work that you do and it, 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 this is why we're here, right? This is a perfect example that if we hadn't got a philanthropic donor such as Clyde Boykoff, sort of believe in QAMA, believe in what we were doing and give us the funding, we would not be here. This is a massive achievement, but I cannot stress that without that initial funding, we would not be here. Most of the people in my lab are very young, they're, they're mid-career researchers, they're early career researchers. For them to experience something like this from, from the start, this is what keeps them having belief in working in science and, and making discoveries. And at the end of the day, we always say it's about helping the patients. And if this takes us to helping the patients, yes, we're all very proud. <laughs>